It was supposed to be another typical day at the ant colony when I decided to peek in and check up on my carpenter ants, named the Redwood Warriors, in their ant farm. I removed the red film, which fools the ants to think they're in the dark, seeing as ants can't see red light. But this is what the ant nest looked like. No ants, empty chambers, the Redwood Warriors Queen, all the workers and babies were gone. This was a very big problem. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. But don't worry AC family, I knew exactly where they were. They were there in their water reservoir test tube. The colony had decided to move out of their nest, but the ants moving out of their nest wasn't the very big problem I was talking about. After all, young ant colonies do well living in test tubes, and the Redwood Warriors were actually raised in one since the start. The big problem, AC family, was why the ants moved out. The nest was perfectly hydrated and moist, so it wasn't a humidity issue. The issue, guys, was this. Have a look. Mold. Mold. And more mold. The nest had gone foul with mold. If you've been watching the channel over the past few weeks, we've been watching these fuzzy mold clumps grow in size more and more over time. Though it's not a direct threat to the ants, the ants decided it was time to move to a cleaner area, which is what ants typically do in the wild once mold takes a hold of their nest chambers. Oh, it looks like my camera lights have caused the ants to decide to move back into the nest now. I see them carrying brood in. But the problem is, in the wild, all the mold growing in an ant nest would be dealt with through nature's cleaning creatures, like mites, springtails, and isopods, which would eat all this junk. But here in this ant farm, it's pretty sterile and devoid of such a cleanup crew. Actually, wait. AC family, I take it back. See that there? That is a mite. Mites like these actually eat fungus and decaying matter, so they would help the ants keep the nest clean. I was happy to see this, because it meant that soil creatures were now beginning to file in from the new outworld we gave the ants last week. This outworld, we call Crimsonia, was meant to foster a growing population of cleanup creatures, like mites, to keep the Redwood Warrior's nest mold-free but there definitely weren't enough mites or other cleanup creatures here yet. These random isolated mites were not enough to handle the mold growing in the nest, which was now at the point where it was bothering the ants enough to move into their drinking water test tube. I also noticed the ants back in their nest home vigorously licking all surrounding surfaces clean of mold spores. Ant saliva contains antifungal properties, so the ants had to make sure every spot was licked clean, as well as the brood. They couldn't afford to lose the young to mold, especially dangerous in a home where mold was allowed to grow unchecked. And AC family, look at this. Here is last week's cricket meal, also being taken over by mold. And oh, I do see a springtail there, but it still wasn't enough. There was clearly a biological imbalance favoring mold growth within this ant living space. And so AC family, I think you guys will love what I did next to solve our mold issue. And more importantly, who I decided to bring back to the channel. It's time we bring back some friends from the Antiverse. Five months ago, some of you might remember the creation of the Isopodium. It was a magical world filled with some of the most amazing cleanup soil creatures known as isopods of various types and color phases, including gray, orange, white, koi, and the roly-poly type isopods. The garden-inspired isopodium was pristine and the perfect breeding grounds for an isopod population. Well, AC family, prepare to be shocked when you see what the isopodium looks like today. AC family, behold, the isopodium five months later. 
It's practically unrecognizable now. Now when I say the isopodium exploded, I mean it exploded. What started off as a population of about a hundred or so isopods has exploded to a population of tens of thousands. What used to be a beautiful garden was now a landfill full of dead acacia leaves, which they've been eating. And it does seem that the predominant genetic phenotypes that made it through the interbreeding of color phases were the orange and gray. Babies start off looking white, but then change color later. I didn't see any white or koi colored isopods anywhere. But needless to say, the isopodium population has truly been flourishing in the isopodium. They had a very extensive underground network of tunnels and leaves with multiple floors and varying moisture levels. What's cool is they seem to only want to eat the green part of the dead leaves, but leave the veins on the leaf, which leaves behind a neat venation pattern, a beautiful natural work of art. Seeing the isopods now, I could truly appreciate just how much they were masters at cleanup of dead and decaying material in the forests they're from. And what's awesome is, there's a layer in the isopodium that is a mix of decaying leaf veins and isopod poop that is just awesome growing medium and fertilizer for plants. It's known as humus. If I were to plant a plant inside the isopodium now, it would truly grow quickly and prolifically because of this humus layer. Now I wasn't sure if the isopods would eat the mold growing in the Redwood Warrior's nest as they're more well known to eat decaying plant or animal matter and droppings of animals. If ever, isopods living in and around the Redwood Warrior's nest would at least eat up any garbage left behind by the ants, so mold doesn't start in the first place. But there were other creatures in the isopodium that I did know would help eat up mold, and they were these. Springtails. Those little white quick creatures, known as springtails, are pretty much like the rats of the ant world. They eat up anything and are well known to ant keepers and terrarium builders the world over as important cleanup creatures to have in a living space containing animals and plants. They don't harm the ants nor animals living with them. They reproduce quickly and best of all, they feast on mold. If you look around the isopodium, you will not spot a clump of fuzzy mold anywhere despite the environment being moist and perfect for mold growth. This isopod springtail tag team was thorough and effective at cleanup. And so AC family, going back to our beloved carpenter ants, the Redwood Warriors, and their moldy ant nest, this was the solution to our big problem. Our isopodium contained everything we needed to help solve our mold issue. We needed to introduce a population of isopods and springtails into our living system in order to eat up the mold and the mold supporting ant garbage. It was time to seed our ant setup with cleaning creatures so the ants could live in a nest that was much more like that of ants in the wild, nesting in a rotting log on the forest floor or underground within the soil. But first, AC family, before we go ahead and add our soil creatures to the Redwood Warrior setup, there's something I need to share with you guys real quick. Speaking of ants digging nests underground, you guys must check out this epic ant simulation strategy mobile game I've been checking out lately, the first of its kind. It's got a variety of different fantasy ants in it. Through Gacha, you can easily get advanced special ants, like the ever-rare Banshee Panda species. You design your own ant hills and watch your ants living in them, much like we do in my videos. Without getting too deep into it, no pun intended, you can upgrade your queen, expand the nest, and discover new worlds. It's also got scorpions, spiders, and other beasts. Above ground, there's also lots to see like beehives, crayfish, and even dragon eggs. I hear it's currently got over 20 million downloads worldwide and has entered the top of the charts in multiple regions. The folks at The Ants Underground Kingdom have been kind enough to sponsor this episode of The Ants Canada Ant Channel and have informed me that it's the best time of the year to download The Ants Underground Kingdom. Just use the redemption code I've put in the description box to get rewards. The game has prepared a bunch of benefits for players on Christmas. So guys, go enjoy the world of ants through the Ants Underground Kingdom mobile game today.
Alrighty, C family, let's do this. I went into the isopodium and began to dig a little through the leaf litter to expose the humus layer. Look at all those soil creatures scurrying about. Don't worry, soil minions. You will love where I'm going to place you. I dropped a handful of humus and leaf litter into Crimsonia and proceeded to organize the rubble. Looking into Crimsonia, my heart was delighted to see all the little soil creatures crawling around, seeking hiding spots in their new place. Isopods scurried around. I even spotted some new mites crawling around. And a pair of baby isopods had no idea they were in a new place and were startled by the sudden commotion of a large hand gathering them up and dumping them around. And best of all, a ton of springtails had now been seeded into Crimsonia which would truly help with mold. For a long while, I watched as all the new soil creatures began exploring Crimsonia, their new home. They were no longer Isopodians, but were now officially Crimsonians. The lands were now a lot more natural, biologically speaking, and would soon create a better biological balance within the Redwood Warriors' kingdom. But AC family, our work was not done. There was one more thing I needed to do and it had to do with the nest itself. I placed some humus and leaf litter directly inside their ant tower. And there goes an isopod through the tube. This was expected as the tube would also allow the isopods and soil creatures to travel to and from Crimsonia as they please. And another cool thing, this isopod is one of the now rare and remaining koi type isopods. Cool. Having a layer of humus and leaf litter along with all its soil creatures on top of the nest would truly benefit the Redwood Warriors. Looking at the colony below, and it does seem like the presence of an isopod has somewhat startled the colony a bit. The isopod wasn't too worried about the ants and was more eager to explore the nest interior. And look, a springtail, which looked like it was already munching on edibles within the nest walls. The ants seemed a bit surprised to smell the layer of humus but they'll get used to it. All of this is 100% natural to them and components of their environment in the wild. I could already see mites and springtails infiltrating the nest and doing their work. This was awesome. I did the same into the ant nest of the Ebony Army. The humus layer with soil creatures would surely benefit the colony for the same reasons. Although the nest isn't so moldy as that of the Redwood Warriors yet. But it was funny watching isopods enter the nest and a worker totally going berserk on it. Seems the Ebony army wasn't as willing to share its nest space with strangers. The ant sprayed formic acid at the isopod and proceeded to bite it, which eventually sent the isopod off running. I knew in time they'd get to be friends. And that was it, AC family. We just made our ant nests much more sustainable and livable for our ant colonies living in their ant towers. For me, since ants are still very much so wild animals, I've always felt it was important when housing ants to simulate their environment in the wild as best we could. And in the wild, ants or any other living creature for that matter, aren't solo independent beings. By nature, all of life is connected to other life, making up a beautiful tapestry of interdependent creatures, all serving a function in an evolutionary and beautiful dance. I feel we've done something truly awesome today, AC family. Great work, guys. Before we head out, I just wanted to remind everyone that these ant towers, as well as our hybrid nest minis, are at 20% off at antscanada.com until January the 1st. So pick yours up today. Use the coupon code antloveforever21 to get a free ant book as well. Just add it to your cart. Looking forward to you guys keeping ants with me because ant keeping is truly like owning a beautiful piece of nature in your home. I don't expect our ants to be moving out anytime soon again. Something tells me they'll love staying put in their new, biologically leveled up homes. Until the next time we visit these awesome and growing carpenter ant kingdoms, thank you for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever.